from the depths instant tutorial armor and health points when enough of your health points are destroyed your craft despawns and how do we protect ourselves well with a lot of health points and also a lot of armor this is a block of wood this cannon does 1000 damage the block of wood has 180 health points when we shoot it we did a lot of damage and all its health points are gone so the block is destroyed all blocks have health points but larger blocks have of course more health points but it's not only that larger blocks has a health point bonus so for this 4 meter beam has a health point bonus of plus 20 percent this means you should always use the largest blocks you can by using larger blocks you will get more health points for less material here we have a 2 meter metal block this one gives us 10 percent health bonus but the health is still just 770 our cannon does 1000 damage why didn't it get destroyed well let's look at the numbers here inside here you can see it has an armor class of 40 the cannon we are using has an armor piercing class of 30 because the armor class on the target is higher than the armor piercing of the cannon it does not take full damage armor protects against damage wood has only armor class of 8 this means that the cannon should be able to do full damage to this block up in the top right corner you can see it almost did 1000 damage before destroying the block the block has less health than 1000 so it is destroyed in the process firing again on the 2 meter metal beam we can see that it does 750 damage so because of the armor the damage was reduced armor class and angle decides if a shell will bounce off entirely a kinetic projectile hitting a angular surface does reduce the damage this slope does only have 385 health so it should be destroyed it did only 284 damage fantastic and this is because of the angle the projectile came into if we instead put it in this direction it doesn't come in at an angle and it did 689 damage and destroyed the block entirely and also damaged the one behind it the more armor class you have the less damage you will take so if we put a heavy armor block here which has armor of the 60 it does 500 damage well that's half the damage reduced and if we shoot at this extreme slope well the shell bounces off but not all times sometimes it doesn't bounce off and it did only 100 damage to this heavy armor slope here under blocks you can find all the blocks that are classed as some kind of armor but not all blocks in here are really armor armor class is something that stacks if we look at glass it has an armor of a 25 but it's not very good armor because its armor class does not stack like alloy for example it has an armor of 35 but it has a max structural armor boost this means that it will give 7 plus armor to the block in front of it armor class stacks from one layer under it that means that a double metal surface is harder has more armor class than a metal surface with nothing under it it also means that it's even harder if a metal surface is backed by heavy armor one bit of metal here you can see we have an armor class down below here in as 40 this is our armor class but if we look at it is in this direction well it's thicker in this direction so it stacks armor class on itself and you can see here on this metal block that the max structural armor boost is plus 8 as expected so if we put the beam of wood behind it as expected the armor class is now not 40 but 41.6 because of the layer of wood behind it if we add two other layers of wood nothing changes it's only the block below the block that gets hit that counts so if the surface block gets destroyed well this wooden block gets armor class bonus from this block behind it 
this uh, metal block has nothing under it, we add some air and add a heavy armor block behind it, well, since it's air behind it, it doesn't get the armor class bonus. But if we put this block directly behind this metal block, now the armor class is 52. A bit stronger. Some of these blocks you may think is armor do not have a structural armor boost, like rubber and glass and metal plates and applique panels of course. Having two layers of heavy armor gives you an armor class of 72. This is probably excessive, while you can back it by metal and have 68. So the return is diminishing and usually you probably just would go with two layers of metal, which gives you an armor class of 48. This is good enough for most applications. You have to think about the costs of your armor. Wood only costs one material per block, while heavy armor costs 25. It's also very heavy. Don't put all your money on armor. Understand that whatever you do, you can build a cannon that can shoot through it. But you want to protect yourself as much as possible for as low cost as possible. Covering everything in heavy armor might be tempting, but it's probably not worth the cost and you will be so slow because you're so heavy. But by all means, do try it yourself. The best way to protect against explosives is to use a high armor class. Wood, for example, is weak against explosions. While heavy armor has a lot of health points, it also deflects a lot of this explosive damage, because it has such a high armor class. The best way to protect against high armor penetration or kinetic shells is to use a lot of wood because you get so much health points for a very low cost. Of course, this particular cannon only has an armor class of 30, and the best way to defend against this one is of course using sloped metal armor, as you might have guessed. A great way to protect against explosives and loads of other shells is actually to have air gaps. Having air in your armor sets off the fragments and explosions at a further distance from important parts. We can blow up this piece, but the piece behind it is not damaged. So let's see what happens when we do not have this air gap of 3 meters, but only has 2 meters of wood. Well, they both get destroyed. Having bulk makes you last a lot longer. Probably just like human warriors actually. Let's do a little rundown of these types of blocks and uh, what their uses are. Wood. The most amount of health points for the materials you spend and thus the best damage absorber, especially for kinetics. Metal, the most amount of armor class per material. If you need decent armor and don't know what to put, use two layers of metal. Alloy, less health points, less armor than metal, but comes at the same cost. However, it's lighter and floatier than both wood and metal, of course. Best choice for aircrafts and super light boats. A little note to metal and stone. Metal and stone has a buoyancy of negative 1.7. This means they will sink. However, they have a very small negative buoyancy. So uh, they almost are weightless in water. Metal and stone, weightless in water. Yes, they are. So uh, you don't need a lot of wood, which has a positive buoyancy of 27.7. Uh, to make stone and metal float. So while lightweight alloy and wooden blocks are floaty, you only need a few wooden blocks to make a lot of metal blocks float, or stone. Speaking of which, stone. Stone is great against EMP, because wood and uh, stone, they don't lead EMP. You can see that EMP damage reduction is 100 per meter. Uh, while heavy armor, it does reduce EMP a little bit, but it also takes EMP damage. So you might actually want to protect your heavy armor from EMP, because EMP will destroy it eventually. Uh, anyways, stone and wood can be used to insulate from EMP. Um, why I use stone as internal armor is because it has double the armor class compared to wood, which only has eight. It's very cheap also, it's very cheap. So uh, stone also gives you uh, the second best, second best 
health points per material. Wood is the best, stone is the second best when you count health points per material. So stone is also kind of good option to protect against kinetic damage um, if uh, you don't have space for all that wood in your builds. And here we have lead. Uh, lead is not an armor type I do recommend. I mean, it has armor, yes. It is uh, very heavy. As heavy as heavy armor actually, but it doesn't give you the amount of benefits that it's really worth considering to use for anything. I'd only use lead as counterweight. Yeah, lead is counterweight, but it technically works as armor. And here we are, heavy armor. Heavy armor is the strongest armor type in the game. And it's also very expensive. I only recommend you to use heavy armor for specific parts of your build, like for example protecting the AI or protecting expensive turrets. Only use heavy armor to protect things you cannot afford to lose. You can make a sheet of metal have an armor class of 52 instead of its default 40. And uh, that's uh, what I use for um, heavy punish taking panels. A, a layer of metal and a layer of heavy armor beneath it. Here we have decking or reinforced wood. Now this block, um, a lot of people hate it <laughs> and a lot of people love it. And what I can say about it is that it's very average. It's very average. It's a mix between metal and wood. I'd actually only use it if I would make decking. It's uh, also called decking. So if you want to have a deck that looks wooden, but make it a little bit stronger, I would probably have one layer of uh, decking uh, as that instead of one layer of wood. It might actually be just better to have one layer of metal like this and just have one layer of wood on top of it. And uh, this would be uh, better protection for your money than having decking. And actually, uh, one layer of wood and one layer of metal does give you better protection than two layers of reinforced wood. While they cost the same, the armor stacking from uh, uh, decking is less than if you'd had one layer of wood and one layer of uh, metal. So decking is pretty average, um, use it if you want to, but it's best for decking. Now applique panels, they're kind of cheap and have an armor class of 50. So, um, applique panels also has a health of just 125 per block, like a lot less than wood for example. Uh, which means that these are best used as disposable armor. You can slap this on a surface and make it survive like a lot longer. We can place this here. And shoot at it and it will survive a hit but it won't survive uh, another hit but it's uh, great for disposable armor and you can also place it inside armor because this block does not give an armor class stacking you can look at it it has a lot of iron stuff uh, so this actually counts as an air gap this area here is an air gap even though it's filled with applique panels and you can't fit anything else in here it's uh, for example great to put that stuff that uh, will not take a lot of damage but needs to be able to take the damage if they take it. Like uh, covering your aircrafts in applique panels can be a really good idea uh, because they're really light, they're very light and uh, they're not very expensive and uh, they have a good armor class. So protecting against a few light shells um, applique panels is uh, one of your best friends and it's also a great addition to uh, air gap filling. If you want to fill your air gaps with uh, something that gives you more protection, a plague panel is a very good friend. Um, there are certain shells like uh, high explosive squash head and uh, heat. These types of shells can penetrate through armor a lot and a plague panel can stop them very easily, especially if you place them in a uh, air gap. Here we have uh, ERA armor, explosive reactive armor. This armor will destroy itself when something hits it. As I mentioned before with heat and hash, if they hit one of these blocks, the shell will get destroyed. 
and this block will get destroyed. Uh, but a good heat or a hash shell can penetrate eight layers of solid metal, if you will, uh, very easily. Uh, and if you have one layer of this on top, then it will stop one shell every time. But I only use ERA armor together with uh, a good number of repair bots. So if you have a couple of um, repair bots and some uh, extra materials to spare, you can use uh, ERA armor and um, it will regenerate. Uh, they're not much protection against cram cannons and missiles, so um, they're really specific against uh, advanced cannon, heat and hash shells. But I guess they have one job and they do it. With all the basics, we can conclude the part one of this tutorial. Take a break and come back for part two when you feel ready.